All right. So you sent this fascinating video our way, analyzing Mae West, you know, through the lens of the Enneagram as a sexual two. Mm -hmm. And we love a good deep dive. Yeah. So let's unpack this, shall we? For those who may be new to it, the Enneagram categorizes personalities into nine interconnected types, right. each with their own set of motivations and fears. Exactly. We're not trying to like shove Mae West into a box here, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just get a new angle on her. So when we talk about a sexual two, what are we really talking about? Charisma, a desire for deep connection, almost like a magnetic pull towards others. Okay. They love attention and often push boundaries. Okay, I'm already seeing the Mae West connections here. Just that, quote, I'm a tough girl, I can take care of myself. Yes. That independent spirit, the confidence that seems very yeah. sexual. It absolutely is. <laughs> and it's not just about being tough on the surface. That independence often stems from a deep need to feel loved and appreciated. Okay. Even if it's expressed in unconventional ways. I see. Which leads us to another gem. I'm no angel, but I can be a very sweet devil. Ooh, yes. You see that playful duality, the allure? Yeah. So characteristic of the sexual too. This is where it gets really interesting, right? We're talking about seduction attraction all within the context of early 20th century Hollywood. Right. How does that archetype, that desire to connect, how does that play out in how Wes built her persona? Well, think about it. For a sexual two that need for validation and connection often manifests through their attractiveness, their desirability. Mm, it's almost like a form of currency in a way. It can be. Yeah. It's not necessarily about vanity, though. Right. It's tied to a deeper yearning to be seen to be desired. And in the world of early Hollywood, that could manifest in some really powerful and, let's be honest, complicated ways. That's putting it mildly. But the video argues there's more to West than just seduction and the spotlight. It highlights her philanthropy, her support of other artists. Right. That doesn't exactly scream femme fatale on the surface, does it? It doesn't. And that's where we begin to see the complexities of the sexual two archetype emerge. Mm. Remember, they crave that connection. Okay. It's not just about taking, but also giving. Yeah. And often they find incredible fulfillment in helping others shine. So it's about generosity, too. Exactly. It's about being the person others can rely on, the one who uplifts and supports. It all ties back to that core desire to be loved and appreciated, to forge those deep connections. And you see that in how she championed Cary Grant early in his career, right? Even her interactions with fans seem to have that generosity of spirit. You're picking up on something really crucial there. It's like the video suggests West's story encourages us to look beyond the surface. Sure, she was a glamorous icon, but those who really knew her talk about her enormous heart, her genuine desire to help others succeed. Okay, but this is where things take a turn in the video, wouldn't you say? It brings up Claudio Naranjo, a big name in the Enneagram world, and his use of terms like vampires and femme fatale in relation to West. Right. Those are some pretty loaded terms. They are. Naranjo used those archetypes to describe some of the potential pitfalls of the sexual too. It's about recognizing that this intense need for connection, this desire to be desired, it can become about control and manipulation if it's not kept in check. So the vampire's archetype in a nutshell. What's the takeaway for our listener? It's a way of understanding how a sexual two's energy, while magnetic and alluring, can become draining for those around them if they're not careful. Think of it like this. An unhealthy desire for validation can lead to seeking it in ways that ultimately don't serve anyone involved. But isn't there a danger here of projecting these terms onto the past? I mean, West was a woman operating in a time when women's roles were so narrowly defined. It feels almost unfair to judge her by today's standards. That's a perceptive point, and it speaks to the larger issue of interpreting historical figures through a modern lens. It's crucial to consider the context. Wes was out there challenging societal norms, embracing her sexuality in ways that were practically unheard of at the time. She was a disruptor, and that can be threatening, especially to those in power. It's like she was playing this high-stakes game, pushing boundaries, challenging expectations. Precisely. And while these archetypes can be helpful tools for understanding behavior, it's crucial that we don't reduce complex individuals to a single label, West, like all of us contain multitudes. So maybe it's less about labeling her and more about using these ideas to deepen our understanding of who she was. Exactly. And that brings us to another point the video raises, this idea of conquest as a driving force for sexual twos. Okay, I'll admit when I first heard that, it sounded a little intense. Like it brings up these images of domination. Sure. And I'm not sure that's always a negative thing. You've hit on a key distinction there. Conquest for a sexual two doesn't always have to be about controlling others. 
It can also be about personal power, about refusing to be put in a box. Think of it as a drive to create, to inspire, to make a mark on the world. So there's a healthy expression of this conquest. Right. And then there's uh, the flip side. Exactly. A healthy expression might look like someone fearlessly going after their dreams, breaking down barriers and bringing others along with them. An unhealthy expression, on the other hand, might involve using their charisma or sexuality to manipulate situations or people to get their way. Which brings us back to Mary West. How did she conquer? Did she empower those around her or were there casualties along the way? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And the video rightly points out the complexity of her legacy. West was a product of her time, a time when women were largely relegated to the sidelines. She used her wit and her sensuality to challenge those norms, but she also played into certain stereotypes to achieve success. It's a tightrope walk, and she navigated in a way that continues to fascinate and challenge us even today. It's like we're circling back to this idea of nuance. It's not about putting Mae West on a pedestal or canceling her. It's about appreciating the full spectrum of who she was, contradictions and all. Precisely. And that's the beauty of using the Enneagram as a lens. It's not about reducing anyone to a single type. It's about sparking conversation, encouraging us to look beyond the surface and grapple with the complexities of human nature. So as we wrap up our deep dive into Mary West through this Enneagram lens, mm -hmm. what would you say is the key takeaway for our listener? What do you hope they walk away with? I think the biggest takeaway here is the importance of embracing nuance, especially when looking at someone as multifaceted as Mae West. She challenged norms, she pushed boundaries, and she did it all with her signature wit and flair. We can appreciate her for her contributions while also recognizing that she, like all of us, was a product of her time. It's about understanding the context, the complexities, and engaging with her story in a thoughtful way. It's about asking the right questions, right? Yes. Not just seeking easy answers. Absolutely. We're... It's about appreciating the journey, the contradictions, and maybe even challenging our own perspectives along the way. Well said. And, you know, it makes you wonder, how much did Mae West's bold self-expression pave the way for women today to embrace their own power and sexuality? It's like she threw open a door, even if it wasn't always clear what was on the other side. Exactly. And that's what makes her such an enduring and fascinating figure to explore even today. So maybe the real lesson here isn't about definitively labeling Mae West as any one Enneagram type, but rather using this framework to appreciate her audacity, her complexity, and her undeniable impact. She certainly left a mark on the world. She did indeed. Well, on that note, a huge thank you to you for joining us for this deep dive into the enigmatic Mae West. And for you listening, if you haven't already experienced the wit and wisdom of Mae West firsthand, do yourself a favor and check out some of her films. You won't regret it. Until next time, happy exploring.